In the spotlight tonight, good news for America and especially good news for American taxpayers. Grover Norquist's mind control over Republican Party tax policy and therefore American tax policy might not be so controlling after all. Earlier today, the Senate held a procedural vote on legislation that would end $6 billion in ethanol tax subsidies, essentially corporate tax breaks for companies in the ethanol business. That would, of course, have the effect of increasing the amount of taxes those companies pay. This proposal outraged Grover Norquist, who has obtained signatures from most congressional Republicans on his so-called taxpayer protection pledge to never ever raise taxes in any form by increasing rates or restricting deductions and tax breaks. Team Norquist alerted taxpayer protection pledge signers that voting for an amendment to repeal the ethanol tax credit would be considered a violation of their pledge. In effect, a vote for a six billion dollar tax increase. Despite Norquist's warning, 31 Senate Republicans who have signed Norquist's pledge voted against Norquist and for repealing the ethanol tax credit. 34 Republicans in total voted for the bill, which ultimately failed 40 to 59. That bill was introduced and bravely pushed today in the Senate by Senator Tom Coburn. Joining me now, Oklahoma Republican Senator and member of the Senate Finance Committee, Tom, Tom Coburn. Thanks for joining us tonight, Senator. Oh, you're well. I'm glad to be with you. Senator, I want to get to your important vote on the, on the Senate floor today. Uh, but first of all, I want to talk to you about the controversy that's overwhelmed the House of Representatives and Congress, Anthony Weiner's problems. Uh, are you one who thinks Anthony Weiner should resign? Oh, I don't think I should be commenting on somebody else's decision on that. Do you think that it's wrong for other Republicans uh, to be calling for Anthony Weiner to resign who did not call for Senator Vitter to resign in his uh, scandal involving prostitutes or Senator Ensign to resign in the, the scandal that enveloped him? Well, I, I think when somebody's committing suicide, you ought to let them, let them alone. And, uh, you know, all most of those that you just mentioned uh, did enough on their own to end their careers. Uh, and, and Senator, on Ensign, before we get to the issues of, of budget, um, the Senate Ethics Committee uh, has quotes from you where you're involved in what appear to be negotiating uh, the money to be paid to the Hampton family that is that many of us read as, in effect, hush money to try to get them to go away quietly. Uh, the, 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 the Senator Ensign, as the audience knows, had an affair with uh, Mrs. Hampton, and uh, there seemed to was a compensation package that was eventually worked out. Uh, their original proposal, eight million, that you seem to work down to about 2.8 million, and then it got worked down lower than that. Uh, is there anything about that that you regret in your role in that? Uh, no, I, I, I regret. I, I regret. First of all, that's not a full reading of the report. It, that case has been closed, and I've been exonerated. Uh, n number two is my regret is I wasn't a better friend to John Ensign to keep him from making the mistake in the first place. Well, but, but given that you knew what you knew, did you at any point counsel him to resign and to make this problem uh, go away, first of all, by resigning? Uh, uh, my conversations with John covered that and lots of other areas in which I gave him advice to do the right thing and the honest thing and the open thing. But did, did, and I'll close with this, Senator, and move on, but did the honest thing and the open thing include stepping up and resigning? He did. But no, but only when the Ethics Committee closed in on him and they were well, going to expel him. The, I mean, the, at the point, when you the knew point is, is I'm, I, I'm not going to hash back what is old news on John Ensign. I gave him a lot of advice early on that he didn't take. I gave him advice in the middle of it that he didn't take. Uh, he ultimately made the right decision uh, based on his actions. Senator, I do want to get to this important vote. You raised an amendment on the Senate floor today, and uh, sometimes even losing votes in the Senate creates. Uh, a historical momentum. Uh, one of the big events that happened today is 34 Republicans voted to uh, basically eliminate the ethanol subsidies, which is to say eliminate the tax subsidies. And that is a violation in Grover Norquist's view. That is a violation.
violation of a pledge many of you signed to never raise taxes in any way. And the elimination of this tax break would raise taxes on certain companies involved in that industry. But still, uh, Republican senators went forward and voted for it. Is this a break in the lock that Grover Norquist has had on Republican voting in the Congress on tax issues? Well, uh, you know, I think you all tend to overstate the influence of Grover Norquist. He, may, he, he, he certainly has some influence. Uh, I think our greater oath is to do what is in the best interest of the country right now, given all the problems that are in front of us. And I was pleased to see 34 Republicans join with me and say, we're going to eliminate all earmarks, just not the appropriation earmarks, but the tax earmark as well. And so if you'll remember, the earmark history came from an amendment I offered on the bridge to nowhere. And that started the battle, and hopefully this will start the battle to end tax earmarks. Uh, Senator, I would love to discover that I have overestimated Grover Norquist's power on taxation in this country and in the Congress. I, I think you're going to find that out. I think as, as we unfold to fix the problems of this country, you're going to find out that Republicans are going to end up making the votes that will compromise and solve the problems because the country has to have us. We have to abandon party and we have to do the principal thing, which is how do we build a compromise that actually solves the problems in front of our country. But, and, uh, uh, Grover Norquist has said about you and is prepared to say about other senators. To you, about you, he said specifically that you lie, lied his way into office. Those are his words uh, because you're offering an amendment that would close a tax loophole, what is basically a corporate tax loophole, and therefore raise revenue on certain tax returns. Uh, the, he's obviously going to use that technique against other senators who are running for re-election. What is the, in the Republican cloakroom today, what what was the talk about what Grover Norquist no, would do there, to those there, senators? There wasn't any talk. There wasn't any talk. He, he's not going to do anything. It, it, but between now and the next year, as we go to solve this problem, Everybody knows there's going to have to be a compromise on some sort of revenue increase as we make the major cuts. That's just fact. You can deny it. And Grover's old news. It's, it doesn't matter what he says. It doesn't matter what he wants. He's old news, and we're going to fix the country. And some of that's going to be revenue increases. That's the only way you're going to build a compromise and get it signed by this president. Now, now I understand that, and everybody else. The fact is most people won't admit it. Senator Coburn, you got uh, 40 votes. Votes on the uh, on the floor, but because you brought it up in a procedurally unusual way, there were certain senators, it seems to me, in this roll call, who voted the other way for procedural reasons, not because of the substance of your amendment. And I won't bore the audience with what I'm referring to here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, is it your sense that if you could have brought this, if this could have come up in a clean way, where there was no procedural argument with Harry Reid about how it was brought up, that more Democrats would have joined you in this vote. Oh, I, I think there's no question we would have had 63 or 64. But but it begs the question: to, the Senate is supposed to be the body where you have the right to amend, and we were shut out on the small business uh, innovation bill. Uh, we were going to be shut out on this bill. So the, the reason we use cloture to bring an amendment, which is well within the rule, Rule 22 of the Senate, you've been around here, you know those rules, we, well within a reason. The reason we lost votes is because the majority leader broke arms today to make people, and they're scrambling to find out another way to vote this so they don't look so bad. Uh, so you'll see this vote or a similar vote to it come right back to the Senate in the next week or 10 days so they have a cover vote so they can say, well, I voted against this, but I voted for this. Senator, are you going to continue to bring up the amendment on other legislative vehicles that where you think you can? Uh, I'm going to continue to bring up amendments that, are, that eliminate stupid policies by the federal government. And that, uh, if I could bring up 100, I'd bring them up. Uh, because I've got a hundred stupid examples. I think we could both easily find a hundred stupid things the federal government's doing right now. Senator Tom Coburn, thank you very much for joining us tonight. You're welcome. Coming up, the governor.